God for this opportunity uh, to be standing before you this morning um, to, to share with you that which God, you know, has for us this morning. And I'd like to say thank you to the church and to the pastorate of the church and to the youth church. I pray that the Lord himself will come to use us for his glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'd like us to start by reading 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 26. So know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as, un not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that beats the air. It's something that a lot of us are very familiar with. And I'd like to read it again from the Amplified Version this time. He says, do you not know that in a race, all the runners compete, but only one receives the price? So you run your race that you may lay hold of the price and make it yours. Not every athlete who goes into training conducts himself temperately and restricts himself in all things. They do it to win a wreath that will soon wither, but we do it to receive a crown of eternal blessedness that cannot wither. Therefore, I do not run uncertainly without definite aim. I do not box like someone. I do not box like one beating the air and striking without an adversary. And so the topic before us this morning is perseverance. Perseverance, pressing forward purposefully. Pressing forward purposefully. And it's part of a series that has been going on for the last couple of weeks, um, you know, around being fruitful in the knowledge of God, you know, victorious Christian living. And so... We talked about self-control last, last week, Sunday in the first service, and today we're talking about perseverance. Perseverance. And we'd like to talk through some definitions. You know, what is perseverance? What does it mean? So that we can understand that, you know, we're all on the same page before we start to talk about details. And, you know, the outline really will talk about what is perseverance, why perseverance, and what are the enablers for perseverance. Praise the Lord. And I pray that the Lord himself will speak to each and every one of us wherever we are in our journey. Because again, when we share these words, you know, it's a message for everybody. In the course of preparing for this, you know, God has been dealing with me myself. And so this is not about me speaking to you. It's us going on a journey together. And I pray that the Lord himself will speak to each and every one of us in Jesus' name. And so persist, um, perseverance is persistent in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. It is, you know, when you continue to push forward, you push because you know that you're heading somewhere. And so while it looks rough, while it looks like everybody's wondering, why are you still doing this? You keep going, and that is perseverance. You know, it's a continued effort, that's another definition, to do or achieve something despite difficulties, failures, or opposition. Praise the Lord. It says, even when it's difficult or takes a long time, and, you know, we start to wonder and say, why, why are we speaking about this? You know, <laughs> a lot of times we like to come to church and just like, you know, God is doing it and he's going to do it today. Those are the kind of things we need to hear. But sometimes God reminds us of these critical principles of the kingdom because this race that we're on, you know, has all sorts of bumps, turns, and, and curves. And every once in a while, we need to remind ourselves that there's, there are those times when it's not exactly, you know, yummy, yummy, but you need to keep pushing. And so if you can just turn to your neighbor and say, let's talk. <laughs> Let's talk. So we are talking today. Praise the Lord. And I pray that the Lord himself will speak to us. Praise the Lord. You say it's a, it's a characteristic that drives the zeal to proceed on a tough path. You know, you are proceeding towards a purpose because the benefits of that purpose outweighs whatever cost you're seeing. And so while it does not make sense to other people, you have understood the benefit of where you're going. And so because of that, you are pushing forward because you have counted your cost. And you know that this is what pushing up for. And, and, and we'll discuss some of the reasons why you will do that. Praise the Lord. And we do this both in our Christian race as Christians and even in our day-to-day -day life. You know, a lot of people that have succeeded in life, in business, entrepreneurs, when they tell you their story, sometimes you're like, wow. You went through all of this and you got here. Praise the Lord. And it says, you know, when, and, and that's why we, I call this, you know, pressing with purpose. Because when you understand purpose, you know, the definition of purpose is that the reason why something is, exists or why it is made or why it's used. And so when you understand the purpose, you know, you are able to persevere. Praise the Lord. You know, we, we, we see in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, you know, it talks about the purpose being for an appointed time. 
And so when you start to understand that sometimes the promises that God has given you is for a time, you know, and there's a path to it, there's a journey to it, you know, we are able to, again, show up and keep moving on. And I pray that the Lord himself will give us that grace, the strength to move on despite whatever challenges that are in front of us in the mighty name of Jesus. And so when you persevere, you know, because of that strong sense of purpose, you choose to move forward to the goal, despite the appearance today not looking like it. You know, you look around you and you cannot, you cannot really see a path to it, but you're confident in the person who has promised you. And so you move forward. So you show up consistently. You know, you, you show up every day. You wake up and say, I have to keep going. You march forward, as even when, you know. I wrote it and I said, even when, and especially when. You know, that sometimes when, when you see certain challenges on your path, it's an indication of the glory that's on the other side of the mountain. Praise the Lord. You know, if it was easy, <laughs> you know, everybody will be there. And so a case study that came to mind when I was, you know, studying about this was Moses and how he led the, you know, Israelites out of, the, out of Egypt. And it seemed very impossible to even get them out of the hands of Pharaoh. You know, this is a person that, you know, they, they were thriving on the work that the slaves were doing for them. So why would he let them go? And by the way, he's saying, I don't even know who your God is. But Moses persevered. But in persevering, there were so many times he said, why me? You know, when God called him and said, you know, come and go and save the Israelites, he said, Mike, as in, who am I? Why would, why would Pharaoh want to even listen to me? So it's not as if from day one he was confident that he was going to do it. When he went and he, get, and he went and told, um, you know, Pharaoh that, you know, my God, uh, you know, we need to go and serve our God in the, in the, you know, wilderness. And he said, who is your God? And he doubled the task of the Israelites. Moses asked God, is this why you sent me here? So he asked, why me? And then in the course of the journey, when they even got out and they were in the wilderness, he asked God again, why, 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 what have I done wrong that you have put the burden of these people on me? When the people complained and complained. And so that's an indication of how tough Moses' task was to lead the children of Israel to the promised land. It took years, you know. Even God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. So God is sending you on an assignment and he's telling you, I've hardened his heart. And so, you know, it was like a training for Moses in the early days because the things he now faced after he left Israel, um, after he left Pharaoh, rather, on the journey to the promised land was, you know, nothing compared to whatever he had to deal with, you know, with um, Pharaoh. But yet, he led them to the promised land. Yeah, he didn't enter, but he got them there. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And so what's, what's, how's that, how does that link with the series we've been talking about, you know? We talk about being fruitful, you know, in the knowledge of Christ. In 2 Peter 1, verse 5 to 8, that's the, the anchor theme that we'll be using for about, I think, six Sundays now or thereabout. It says, but also for this reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the, 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 the truth here is that for you to be fruitful in the knowledge of Christ, you know, you have to, it's, it's, it's a complete ingredient. You can't have one and leave the other. You're going to have faith. You know, we've talked about faith. We've talked about virtue. We've talked about knowledge. You need to know. You need to have an understanding of what you're, what's ahead of you, where you're going, and, and, and the path in between. But more importantly, you need to put your body under. We talked about self-control. And then you have to take the step of faith to move forward. Because we know that the journey is challenging. The Bible calls it the straight and narrow way. It says very few people find it. And so it requires perseverance to go through it. And so how is perseverance different from self-control? So while both of them have to do with discipline, putting yourself under. You know, self-control is restraint, exercise over one's impulses, your emotions, your desires. But perseverance, on the other hand, has to do with the active pursuit of a goal. So when you think about an analogy that came, comes to mind for me, maybe not as accurate, is in weight loss. And so if you are trying to lose weight, self-control is when they bring that same yummy ice cream and all that. You tell yourself, I cannot eat this. And so you hold yourself, right? But perse perseverance, you know, in, in my analogy, is you getting up every morning, even when your body is paining you to go out and go to that walk. So it's not just about controlling the things. It's about actively doing something to get you to that goal. And that's what perseverance is. And you need both of them. 
Because it's a combination. You need discipline to get you to where you're going. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And so perseverance is an active word. It requires motion. It's about pressing forward. You know, it says, you know, I press towards the price of the mark. You know, it means that there's something that you're pushing against. It's not an easy walk. It's not a walk in the path. And it's important that we know that because as Christians, sometimes we think that as soon as God says something, it's just going to happen. And that's where sometimes people lose the promise because they give up just before their testimonies arrive. Praise the Lord. And, and in the course of studying this, you know, I, I, I remember something I would learned in the past and I thought was very relevant, which is around the concept of Kairos versus Kronos. And those are the Greek words for time, and they use them a lot in the Bible. And we are told that while Kronos is a chronological ticking of time, the days, the years, and we are counting those things. I've been on this stage for how many years? But Kairos talks about opportune time. You know, it's the season of time. The specific, you know, the way I see it is, you're there, you're counting that, oh, I've been on this situation for five years, and God is saying this is a step, a ten-step process, and maybe you're still on step one. And so it's not counting it by how long you've been on that process. It's counting by the lessons that you are supposed to have learned to move you to the next level, but that you have refused to learn because you are counting, oh, I'm here for ten years. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. You remember I said, let's talk. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Kairos is a definition of when you are truly ready to enter into the promise. And so the question that came to mind is, that endeavor that you're going through, do you understand the layers? Do you understand the milestones, the things that you're supposed to have conquered to get into the promise that you're trying to go to? You know, some, you say, if, you go, if you want to start an endeavor and you've not counted the cost, you'll get tired because as one thing starts to show up and show up and you're wondering, they didn't tell me this is how this was going to be. And that's why we must understand, you know, what are the milestones to the journey of purpose that we want to go to. Praise the Lord. You know, you don't get promoted by being in class. Okay, I've, I've gone to school for 10, 10 weeks. I've been there for one year. Okay, let's go to the next class. It doesn't work that way. There's a reason why you take an assessment to show that you're ready for the next level of life. And that's only because you need that experience to help you in the next level. Because imagine somebody that you introduced, I didn't go to GS1 and 2, and you put them in SS3. You have set them up, up for failure up front. And that's how life is. And so sometimes we go through things to build us for the next level that we are going towards. You know, it's like an internal exam versus an external exam. We know all the common entrance. We know those once in a time, once in a lifetime exams where all of the training that your school gives you from primary one to six gets you to common entrance. And that's the showing that wants to glorify God. There are certain situations in our life that are for God's glory. It's like the external exam that we write. And if we have not built the strength in the internal exam, and that day of showing for God is like, you're not ready. Praise the Lord. And so we need perseverance. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He says the Israelites did 40 years in the wilderness because they were not ready for that milestone. They were about to enter. They had gotten there in the valley of Eskol and, and God said, go. And they said, oh, the giants are there. We look like locusts. And they said, let's go back to, Israel, to Egypt. And so God said, these guys are not ready for the promise. They spent 40 years in the wilderness because they had not hit the milestone of readiness to enter into the promise. I pray that our journey will not be elongated because we refuse to push forward in Jesus' name. So, what, you know, why do we need perseverance? Very quickly, it builds strength. Praise the Lord. It says, if you faint in the day of adversity, then your strength is small. Just like I said, when you go and write NGSC or you go and write where I can jump, if, you have not been, if they've been pushing you along in your previous classes, well, it will show up. Praise the Lord. There are certain times in life where, you know, every stage in life is a preparation for the journey ahead because there will be other situations that will test you. You know, that will, if you ask people to tell you their stories, I'm telling you, you realize that as you're getting out of one, and that's not because God is, God is not um, fair. You know, he builds you. You know, there's some things that when they give you math, there's some put today, and if I just tell you 10 plus 10, 15 plus 15, you can do a mental math because you have grown past that stage. And that's how life is. It strengthens you. Praise the Lord. You know, when you see someone that's been doing endurance training, if they tell us to, if you just hear, hey, now, nah, they have to run up 10, a 10 flight of stairs, they just do it with ease because they have built the strength in the place of training. I put that on the day of our, <laughs> the true test, we will not fail in Jesus' name. Amen. The, you know, there's a common saying, it says when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Number two is that it builds character. When we think about, you know, there's some characters that, it says, um, if we, the Bible tells us that 
the, the trial of our faith worketh in us patience. You know, it builds character for us. Imagine Abraham. Abraham, after having waited so long for a child, God gave him a child and then God asked for the child again. But we have come to build a total trust and obedience to God that is like, if he gave it to me, he can give me, he can raise up the child from the dead. And we can see that in Hebrews 11, 17 to 19. So I won't read that. I'll employ you to read it, you know, on your own. Hebrews 11, 17 to 19. So he builds character for us. You know, that delayed gratification, that waiting for God, I will wait until my change comes. You know, Jesus said for the, for the joy that was ahead of him, he endured the, the, the cross, despising the shame. Praise the Lord. Time flies. <laughs> I need to move forward. It is well. Praise the Lord. It's an enabler of success. Hallelujah. You know, I say it's a prerequisite for receiving the promise. You know, Hebrews 10, 36 to 37 says, For you have need of steadfast patience and endurance, so that you may perform and fully accomplish the will of God and thus receive and carry away and enjoy to full what is promised. For still a little while, a very little while, and the coming one will come and he will not delay. You know, there's a very common um, passage. It says winners don't quit and quitters don't win. Quitters don't win because they quit before there's a chance to win. And so it says, well, weeping may endure for the night. Joy comes in the morning, but you have to make it past the night into the morning. And I, and I don't know who it is, you know who, who God is saying this to. We all, we, all, we all go through those things. And I don't know who needs to be encouraged here today. And I pray that the Lord himself will encourage you in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, perseverance. Perseverance is a sign of confidence. Praise the Lord. It's a sign of confidence in the one who has promised. Because it means that because he told you, and you are sure he's going to come true for you, you go through, you push forward, and everybody says, it, it's, not, it's not looking like it says, no, it has to be because my God has said it. And so, how are you showing your trust and your confidence in God this morning? You know, sometimes the, the moments of success we are eager to celebrate with people. If you hear the stories of what they went to to get to that point, you will understand that perseverance is a key ingredient for, you know, getting the promise. It is a preservation, number four, it's a preservation. The Bible says, he who preserves to the end will be saved. Now, there's a cartoon I saw a while back that says that, you know, there was somebody that was carrying a cross. And he kept saying, this cross is too heavy for me. He cut off something. Oh, this cross is too heavy. He cut off something. And then he got to a bridge. And then he realized that cross was to get him across the bridge. But at that point, his cross was too short to get him across. And so it's a preservation. Our ability to stay strong in the midst of challenges preserves us. And I pray that we'll be preserved, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Number five is that it's an encouragement for others. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 1, it says, Seeing that we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, who by faith has testified to the truth of God's, of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and sin, which so easily entangles us, let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us. And so the fathers of faith showed us what it was possible to do. Some of us are able to do things today because of the things Abraham went through. If the Bible were to be written today, what story would you be telling to somebody else? When you persevere, you encourage others. You show them that it's doable. And together, collectively, we enter into the promise. And I pray that we will not disappoint our generation in the mighty name of Jesus. So how do we build that perseverance as I, as I, as I round up? I'll probably we just not cover everything I wanted to. We have to build our faith. That's the first thing. You know, what came to mind when I first started thinking about this was, who said it? What did he say? Who did he say it to? Was he saying it to you? Is it your word? Is it your race? Because the, the anchor verse will say, run your race. And so if you don't know where you're going, if you have not heard it, if you have not pruned your ears enough to hear from God, then you, some, sometimes when you hear, when everybody discourages you, then you stop because you have not, you don't, you're not hearing from God. God is not a man that he should lie. He will not repent. If he has said it, you know, he will, he will surely make it good. Praise the Lord. So number one, we must build our faith. The second one is that we must lay aside all weights. We must run with patience the race ahead of us. Remove distractions. Remove, you know, look, David encouraged himself in the Lord. When he came and all his family had been taken, you know, they had gone to one war. They did not allow them to fight the war. They came back again. Their home was gone. You know, anybody would just be like, what is all this? And this was someone that was living with a promise to be king of Israel. But he encouraged himself in the Lord. So lay aside distraction. 
and so that you can look on to Jesus and, you know, complete that race. Again, the third one is looking on to Jesus, of course. Once you lay a distraction, a focus and singleness of purpose gets you to your destination. We need the Holy Spirit as the inner fuel. We can't do it on our own. Because no matter how much you try, sometimes some things will just test your faith. It will test your patience. But we need the Holy Spirit because his strength is on us. You know, and we can, receive, we can read that in Isaiah 40, 29 to 31. And Ephesians 3:16. The fifth thing that is important in perseverance is that you must not quit after early wins. What happens for some people is that as soon as the plant starts to bud, you stop watering the plant, and then the plant dies, and then there's another data point as to, oh, this thing doesn't work. There was a story of when I, um, Elijah was going to die in 2 Kings 13, 18 to 19, and the king said, oh, Elijah, father of, um, you know, uh, uh, the strong man of Israel, you know, and he told the king to fire an arrow. And he said, oh, that's the arrow of deliverance of Israel. And told him, take the arrow and hit it on the ground. And then he hit it like three times. And that was, I was like, why did you stop? You know, if you had continued, you would have been able to finish and, you know, conquer your enemies. But you only have victory three times. And so in perseverance, we must not quit from early wins. Because you think it has happened and then you stop. That can be a reversal. And I pray that will not be a portion in Jesus' name. And so in the final analysis, Israel, the Israelites were counting their days. And yes, yet God was marking their readiness. You don't, you don't move to the next class because you have spent time on the current stage. But instead, by the readiness you have shown in passing your assessment. So change your perspective. Measure yourself by the milestones that are ahead of you on the journey that you are going to. Stop counting days. Stop counting years for God. Ask God, you know, how am I, how am I maturing? Somebody says, pray until something happens. You say, pray until you listen. That's what some people have heard another version. Say, pray until you listen. And I pray that the Lord will speak to us himself in Jesus' name. One word I heard, you know, very clearly as I was preparing this was, move forward, it shall come to pass. Even me, I receive it. Move forward, it shall come to pass. You know, God says, I'm still in the business of making way where there seems to me be no way. Move forward. You know, like the Israelites, Jesus said, Moses, why are, you, why are you crying to me? Move forward, speak to them, you know, raise the rod, and let Israel move forward. Praise the Lord. God says, that is my specialty. When it looks like all else has failed, that is when I step in so that the glory can be mine completely. I don't know who needs this, but move forward. And the Lord himself will establish it in the mighty name of Jesus. Lastly, we must always remember that it's not of him that wills, not of him that runs, but it's of the Lord that shows mercy. So we need the mercy of God for the race ahead. We need that mercy consistently. We see that in Romans 9, 16. You know, the Lord says he will make our feet like the hind's feet. You know, Amplified Version in Psalms 18, verse 33 says, He makes my feet like the hind's feet, able to stand firmly and tread safely, on the path of testing and trouble, he sets me securely upon my high places. I pray that the Lord himself will empower us in the mighty name of Jesus. And we'll be able to go on our high places in the mighty name of Jesus. We'll be guided by the inspiration and the direction of the Almighty. We will hear a voice in our ear consistently like Isaiah 30 verse 20 to 21. Because the Bible says, you know, in this world there are tribulations. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. That we can't say much. We have, to, we have to wrap up and we have to pray. I don't know what God has spoken to somebody today. You might be here and you're there and you're saying, you know, the Bible says he makes everything beautiful in his time. You see that in Exodus 3.11. It says he had made everything beautiful and appropriate in his time. He had also planted eternity, a, divine, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart. A mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Yet man cannot find out, comprehend, or grasp what God has done. His overall plan from the beginning to the end. And so a prerequisite for preservation, like we have said, is alignment with God's purpose. So I don't know if you have, you're here. You have not accepted God into your life this morning. You know, it's like fighting blindly. It's like fighting without direction. Because the journey of life is tough. 
The journey of life is challenging. So you need instruction, you need connection, you need a sense of purpose. So I don't know if you're here today. And you know in your heart of heart that you're fighting on your own. You're going, a, you're going on that journey blindly. Just raise your hand where you are so that you can ask God into your life. It's an individual journey. Everyone is going to run their race. Every single, one, every single person will run their race. Is there anybody there? It's not, about any, it's not about your friend. It's not about the person sitting next to you. There is a boldness. It starts from the knowledge of what God has promised. And so do you want to give your life to Christ? Are you there? Are you asking God on that journey to go on that journey of life with you? Can you please raise your hands wherever you are? Praise the Lord. We should not be ashamed of the Lord. God bless you, my brother. Please rise to your feet. Is there anybody that wants to join him on this journey? On this journey, of, and on this journey with God holding our hands. We sang that song at the beginning. He said, I will not fail because Jesus never fails. If you're here and you want to join him, please rise to your feet and join him here. Praise the Lord. My brother, I'd like you to just ask God into your life. Just pray to God. You know yourself. You know how, how, how your journey has been to this point. Ask the Lord to forgive you, to have mercy upon you, to accept you and to take you on this journey, to lead you because you know you cannot do it by yourself. Our Father and our God, behold your child. Father, I ask, oh God, that even as he's making the commitment to go with you on this journey of life, Father, hold his hands. Lead him, oh God. Let him not miss it in life and in destiny. Ask, write his name in the book of life. When you come for your own, let him not be missing. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We're all going to pray. Please, let's just write to our feet. Our brother, you can, still, you can still stay. Let's just take this prayer. Let's just ask God to strengthen us. I don't know where you are on your journey. I don't know what your journey looks like. But me, I need God on my journey. And so let's begin to ask God. Let's ask God to strengthen us on that journey. Father, strengthen my feet. Make my feet like the hinds feet. I need you. I need you so that I don't give up at the, at, before my victory comes. Father, strengthen me, oh God. Father, strengthen me, oh God. Help me like only you can. Father, help me. I need you. Speak to me. Direct me. Lead me. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe you guys don't have those challenges that you are facing. I have mine. This word has tested me so much in the weeks leading up to today. That I've had to ask God consistently to please help me. And so let's ask God to help me. Help you. Father, help me. I cannot do this on my own. I need your strength, oh God. Help me, oh God. In this month of divine acceleration, let your promises come to pass in my life. Make my feet like the hind feet. Let me go on my high places, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I'd like us to take this song before we go. I know time is fast spent, but please um, forgive me. The song was very heavy in my mind as I was preparing for this. It says, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Let's begin to pray that, Lord, even as you do that which you have promised, I will not be a hindrance. I press forward. Say with your mouth, I press forward. I will not give up. I will not give up before my deliverance. I will not give up before my promise. Because I will see that promise that you have promised me, oh God. Hey, what we 